Did you know that Bangkok is consistently ranked as the most visited city in the world? We'll discuss this and other interesting facts about international travel with award-winning photographer and travel writer Jeremiah Gilbert on this episode of The Curious Professor. I'm Dr. B. Welcome to the Curious Professor podcast, where I take listeners on a journey of discovery to explore the people, places, artifacts, and natural wonders that spark my curiosity. On this episode of the Curious Professor podcast, we'll explore the wonderful world of travel with Jeremiah Gilbert. But first, a trivia question. Where is the largest pyramid in the world? I'll have the answer for you at the end of this episode. I'm thrilled to have Jeremiah Gilbert on the show today. Jeremiah is an award-winning photographer and travel writer based out of Southern California. His travels have taken him to nearly 100 countries and territories around the globe. His photography has been published internationally in both digital and print publications and exhibited worldwide. He is the author of the collections Can't Get Here From There, 50 Tales of Travel, and From Tibet to Egypt, Early Travels After a Late Start. When I learned about Jeremiah's travels around the world, my curiosity was immediately piqued and I wanted to learn more. I hope this interview with Jeremiah will spark your curiosity too. Welcome to the show, Jeremiah. It's great to have you here. Oh, thanks for having me. So what's the most unique thing about you? I would say I'm a, a weird sort of hodgepodge of things. I have an advanced degree in mathematics, and that's what I teach at the college level. Yet my passions are photography, writing, travel. And so the past 15 years, I started traveling, and my main creative outlet was the, the uh, photography. And then with the pandemic, I started writing. That was my first time doing travel writing, though before that, I had published some collections of poetry. So I've always been this sort of left brain, right brain <laughs> combination of things. Uh, my father was an artist, so I'm sure the uh, creative bug came from him. My mother started with appliance repair and then computer repair. So I think she was a little bit more of the analytical. So yeah, just sort of this strange hodgepodge of things, but it, it keeps things interesting. So what sparked your interest in photography? That happened in high school. So, you know, as I mentioned, my father was an artist. So growing up, I tried, I, I had been writing since I was a little kid. I always enjoyed words. And, you know, I tried painting and illustration. I just wasn't particularly good at it. And I also didn't want to compete with my father. So in high school, my best friend at the time was taking a course in photojournalism. And he was looking for someone to go out with him and take photos. And so this was back in the day of film. So I bought the same camera he was using, a fully manual film camera. We'd go out, shoot, come back, convert one of our parents' bathrooms into a makeshift dark room, develop the film for the day. But, you know, so he taught me, you know, aperture and shutter speed and things like that. Uh, also how to develop film. And so it was just, it was a very enjoyable process. And it sort of gave me that visual creative outlet I didn't have. And so I just kept at it. And so when I started traveling seriously, that's sort of when they, the two kind of came together. Up until then, I just sort of, you know, photographed now and again. In fact, it was that first trip to Tibet in 2006 that I switched to digital. Up until then, I was still shooting film. And so just, you know, kept growing with it and kept enjoying it. And now, now I had a regular outlet, which was very nice. Do you enjoy digital? Digital, or are there things you miss about the photography that you developed? I really enjoy digital. And I will be honest with you, I attempted, I rented a film camera a few years ago and just did not enjoy the whole experience. I was, it's just, no, nah, I don't like this anymore. I do miss contact sheets. So that's when you would develop the negatives and then 
do a print of the negatives and then you can kind of go through and see which ones you like. Now you kind of sort of do something like that in the digital world. I use a program called Bridge. So through that, I can kind of go through all the photos I took. You can even rank them five, four, three. But that I do miss. That that was enjoyable. But no, I've, I've really embraced digital. I'm very happy to be doing digital. You have traveled to nearly 100 countries and territories around the world. What is one of the most intriguing places that you've visited? Oh, there's been several. I have this tendency of, you know, I like to not go to the more conventional places, though I've I've been. A few years back, I spent a birthday in Haiti. That was very interesting. Uh, the entrance into Haiti, we were in Dominican Republic. Within 20 minutes of crossing over the border, we were pulled over at a checkpoint. And I'm not quite sure what the issue was, but they didn't seem to want to let us <laughs> go much further. And they had both my passport and my wife's passport. And I was like, okay. But that calmed down. The birthday itself was rather interesting. Uh, we had a local guide and we were exploring some ruins of old fortress and an old citadel. And then we visited a youth center uh, where they were trying to teach local neighborhood children about science. And they brought me a cake and I didn't know they were going to do that. And it was this huge cake. So after my wife and I had a slice, I'm like, let's share this with the kids. So the kids went nuts. <laughs> they thought I was the greatest person ever. I mean, that was an interesting trip. I mean, we stayed in Capetian, which I guess used to be quite the resort and yeah now it's it's anything but it was a bit challenging my, we were supposed to do a walking tour in Capetian and my, my wife was a little too nervous so I all my photos of Capetian itself were actually taken from moving vehicles <laughs> I didn't think it was dangerous but you know she was freaking out a little uh that was you know that was a very interesting trip I would say probably oh there, there's just there's so many because like I said I just you know I'm fortunate when I met my wife because she likes to mix things up you know so for instance we just came from Africa then the next trip we'll do Europe. Or if we just came from desert, then the next trip versus I tend to just be, you know, have I been? No, let's go. So that's mixed things up, you know, a bit more interestingly. I mean, the, my very first big trip was to Tibet, which I absolutely loved and highly rate to anybody who's ever thought of going to that region. You know, India is an amazing country. It's a sensory overload. It's one of those, I remember after the Tibet trip, the guide I was with said, okay, you're ready for India now. <laughs> you can survive India now. India is not somewhere I'd recommend. First off, there's just it's just overwhelming of everything. But once you get a little experience, it's, it's an amazing country. And some of the most remarkable sites we've ever seen were in India. You state that you want to inspire those who seek your work to look more carefully at the world around them in order to discover beauty in unusual and unexpected places. What beauty have you found in an unusual or unexpected place? I have a love of ruins. I always have. I'm not sure why. I guess part of it is, you know, living in Southern California, if you're 20 years old, is ancient. Uh, so that's a little different. So as I mentioned, you know, in, in Haiti, we, we visited this citadel, this palace. You know, it's pretty much just some walls. But, you know, there's a there's a grandeur to it. It is, you know, a French design. And that to me is just amazing. I could have spent all day there. There were some, there's out in Bolivia, if you go into the salt plains before you do, there's this old area where a bunch of abandoned trains have just been left there. And so over the years, you know, the, the dryness and the wind has just sort of eaten away at them. But to to me, they were, it was just remarkable. And another place I could have spent twice as long at, you know, so to me, areas like that, where you just sort of see remnants of past civilizations, you can just sort of imagine what it was like, you know, hundreds of years ago is just to me that that to me, there's just a beauty to it. And so, you know, I think sometimes, you know, I remember I was out with a friend of mine once, and we were going to take photos, and it was a very gray day. And so he was, he was like, oh, you know, maybe we shouldn't, there's really not much to shoot today. And I remember telling him, well, you know, let's take it as a challenge. Uh, and in fact, we took it as a challenge. We went to an area that was predominantly white architecture. And so we had no contrast. We have dull lighting, but let's see what we can do. You know, I kind of feel that way. There's, you know, there's some amazing, beautiful sites in the world. You can take great photos and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I like to try to find that same beauty, but in an area that, you know, you might not think it's rather derelict or it's run down or, you know, maybe I, I got there out of season, you know, <laughs> So it'd be wonderful with all the flowers in bloom. They're not blooming, but what can we do? So to me, it's just like, you know, sort of look outside the common, you know, uh, you know, one year 
and my wife and I ended up in Indonesia uh, simply because it was raining. We were in Cambridge and we popped into a bookstore and there was this book and it was one of those like, you know, 50 places to see before you die sort of thing. And I normally don't pay much attention to those. It's, it's always the same things. But this one happened to have Borobudur, which is the largest ancient Buddhist structure in the world. And it's just, it's remarkable. The, the you know, the design of it, I've just never seen anything like it. I was like, okay, we have to go see this. You know, so to me, it's, you know, things like that. It's like, yes, go see the Grand Canyon, you know, go see the Eiffel Tower, definitely see the Roman ruins. But there's other places that are just, to me, just as beautiful and just as incredible. And so, you know, get out there and see those too. In your book, From Tibet to Egypt, Early Travels After a Late Start, you share personal and anecdotal tales of your encounters with diverse people and cultures and reveal a respect for history and a sense of growing wonder at the grandeur of the world. Tell us one of the most interesting stories from that book. Yeah, that book is interesting. What I decided to do was my very first travel collection was a collection of travel tales over the 15 years I had been traveling up at that point. So 2006 to 2020. So for the current book, what I decided to do is rather than focus on short little tales, I would actually focus on like the far first five years of travel and actually tell about the tales themselves, or I'm sorry, the whole travels themselves and sort of give a little more context. Uh, so for instance, I remember we were in, I, well, actually this is before I met my wife. So I was in Central Europe and we were in Prague and we were going to be there several days. And Prague is an amazing city and you can definitely spend, spend several days. But my roommate at the time, I was, I was going with a small group. I heard him asking the guide about this area and if you could like line up a, a trip there. Never heard of it. And and so I asked, I said, well, you know, do you mind if I tag along? That sounds interesting. And what uh, this area is known for is an old mining town about an hour out of Prague. But what it's known for is this church that's made of, it's decorated and adorned with human skeletons. Again, doesn't sound like the most appealing thing to a lot of people. I found it fascinating. It was just, it was a remarkable thing to see. And it just sort of, you know, happened by chance. I did not know about it. I'm, I'm so happy that the, uh, that my roommate mentioned it and let me tag along. Yeah. You know, that was an incredible experience. A little more conventional. Uh, when I was in Peru, was fortunate enough. We spent the night in the town Agus Caliente, that's just down from Machu Picchu. Got on the first bus up which is like 540 in the morning. But when you arrive that early, at least when we did, the whole ruins were just shrouded in mist. And so it was almost like discovering this lost city yourself. It's like, you know, somewhere out there is this whole ancient civilization. And, you know, that was a remarkable experience, you know, by, you know, within 20, 30 minutes, the clouds had lifted and then the sun came out and it was just amazing. So that was one of those, you know, Machu Picchu, I think is always amazing. But if you can get there that early, definitely give it a try. And you have have another book called Can't Get There From Here, 50 Tales of Travel, and it's a collection of travel writing over 40 countries and five continents. What is one of the most fascinating stories from that book? Well, one of the most memorable, I can tell you, because as I said, that covers 15 years. There's a lot in there. I mean, for instance, you'll find out how I met my wife. She's Chinese living in London, and we met in Tunisia, for instance. Also, I spent my 40th birthday in Paris with no ID and no money because I was pickpocketed on the metro. But one I will share that was that was a little more interesting was we were in Bolivia. We just finished a tour. And so we had a, a free day in La Paz. Actually, we had two free days in La Paz. So we spent one day sort of, you know, exploring the area. And then the next day we thought Lake Titicaca is not too far away. It's about a two, three hour bus ride. And I had been on the Peruvian side years before. So I thought, okay, let's give this a try. And so we got on this bus and we were at least two, two and a half hours in. And then we come across a river crossing and you have to get off. So basically the the bus goes onto a barge. Everyone else gets off and goes onto a boat that crosses. It's at this point that the guide asked for our passports. I said, don't have our passports because we're not leaving the country. <laughs> we're still in Bolivia. And he says, oh, well, they're going to check your passport when you do this crossing. And I said, okay, uh, what are our options? So he said, well, I'll tell you what, they never check the bus. So why don't you sit down low below the window, stay on the bus, and then we'll take the... You You'll, it'll go onto the ferry. So we did. We, you know, and got across. Everything was fine. Okay, I just got smuggled across the border. <laughs> it's not really a border, but okay. And the funny thing. 
thing was, you know, we continue on to Lake Titicaca, enjoy the day, come back. And I asked the guide, I said, are we going to have to hunker down in the bus again? And he's like, oh, no, they don't check the passports on the way back. So is there a place that you have wanted to explore but have not had the opportunity to visit yet? Probably highest on the list is Yemen. And that's an area just unfortunately due to the political climate, not going to happen anytime soon. My wife and I would also very much like to go to Iran. Yeah, that can also be iffy. So not quite sure when that will happen. But yeah, Yemen is one of those. There, there's an island. I mean, the Yemeni's architecture is amazing anyway, but there's this island that is just untouched. And there's these trees that are just very, are only grow on this island. And it just, it just seems amazing. So someday, if it's ever, if it's ever, you know, things are better and it's safe to go, that's someplace I would go in a heartbeat. So what is next for you? What upcoming projects are you most excited about? Well, in terms of writing, I'm, I'm unsure. I have like four ideas right now. So one would be do a follow up to the first book. So I got 50 more tales of travel because uh, when I started, when I came, first came up with that idea and started writing out the ideas, I probably have another 30 already, you know, jotted down. Another idea is the continuation of the current book, which would be from the Dead Sea to Mount Fuji and just sort of continue the travels. Or, I mean, if, if it appears that finally... Uh, in May, we're going to be able to leave the country. So that'll be the first time we, we haven't been out of the country since December 2019 or out of the state since March 2020. And the first trip we had to cancel in 2020 was a, a Fiji, New Zealand trip. So I still had credits. So we're going to attempt a week of Fiji in between my spring and summer. And then I'm on to plan C for summer travels. So the first two uh, plans failed. So that will be in uh, mostly Western Europe. And so I also have the idea of, you know, the, the two travel books I've had so far have both been about past travels. So maybe I might attempt to write something, you know, the first year back sort of thing. I'll wait and see that that what I'm not sure about. And I've also been entertaining, you know, I've not done anything uh, with the photography. So I was also starting to play with an idea of a collection of photos, and then the stories behind them, which I thought would be an, an interesting book. I started to work on that one, then things got busy at, at uh, my college and with my classes. So, you know, I'll, I'll wait and see. I, I just figured, you know, first priority is to get back on the road and then I'll, I'll see what, what inspires me. So are there places in the United States that you are interested in traveling to or haven't uh, seen yet? Oh, no, definitely. I, I have some friends who get on me because, you know, I'm a native Southern Californian and I've actually never been to New York. <laughs> so it's a big... Uh, actually, You've I've never been, been all been over New the England. world, but not yeah. New York. <laughs> I know. So that, that's an area I need to get to. I've been up the West Coast and all on the South and I've been to Alaska. So that's a glaring omission on my part. So yeah, one of these days, my wife currently has a cousin in New York who's probably going to be moving to England. Uh, her husband has a, a teaching job at Oxford. So it'd be nice to visit her while she's still in New York. So we'll see. Yeah, the, the plans right now are we kind of have tentative plans for May and July. And after that, I'm not sure. But no, that's certainly a, a glaring omission. There's other areas of the, of the US I haven't been to either. But that's sort of I have a couple friends every time I see them, they bring it up like I know, <laughs> I'll get to it. <laughs> I do want to go. <laughs> I grew up in New Jersey. So the idea of not having visited New York is very <laughs> odd to me. <laughs> I know. That's, a, that's what I get. I understand. What is one of these days? <laughs> so where can listeners find out more? about you? Easiest thing to do is to go to my website, which is jeremiahgilbert.com. I have a link to a portfolio. So I, I put my photography there broken down by, you know, some black and white travel street, etc. Also, if you click on books, you can read more information about the two travel collections, news, stay up to date, um, you know, whatever may be happening. Also, if you go to Instagram at JG underscore travels, that's my travel photography. That tends to be more up to date than my website. So the website I keep up to date in terms of, you know, podcast appearance, radio appearance, publication, the photography less so. I tend to put that more on Instagram. So it's just easier that way for me. So those are really the two main ways. It was great to have you on the show, Jeremiah. Thank you so much for taking time to be a guest on the Curious Professor podcast. Oh, thanks for having me. Really enjoyed it. And now for the answer to this episode's trivia question, where is the largest pyramid in the world? 
The largest pyramid known to exist in the world is the Great Pyramid of Cholula, located in Cholula, Mexico. It is said to be the largest monument on earth ever built by humans. We'll end the show with something punny. How do rabbits like to travel? By hairplane. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Curious Professor podcast. If there's a person, place, artifact, or natural wonder that has sparked your curiosity and you'd like for me to feature it on the show, please let me know. My website is thecuriousprofessorpodcast.com. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to subscribe to the Curious Professor podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you'd like to become part of my community of curiosity seekers, be sure to visit my website, thecuriousprofessorpodcast.com, and join Dr. B's Hive. Until next time, always be learning and be curious with Dr. B.